This is Haywood Hale Brun in Paris, Kentucky. Welcome to Woody's World. I knew him as Woody. I'm Bud Lamoureux. We were a television team exploring the America of the 1960s and 70s, looking for the big stories and the not-so-little ones. And every Saturday night on the CBS Network News, there was Woody Brune with his merry mustache, his loud jackets, and his suitcase full of words. Oh, what words. They knew that they were going to see greatness, and when he came into this circle, pranced around, you remember he was very handsome, chestnut with a deep chest and was considered by connoisseurs of the horse to be perfect in his measurements. There was an excitement before he even ran. Secretariat. Early one morning at the racetrack, a newcomer watching the workouts inquired, whose horse is that? That's no horse, young man, was the response. That's Secretariat. He was larger than life when he became an American cover boy in 1973 and the first Triple Crown winner in 25 years. Champions seem to emerge like mushrooms from some place that you don't expect them. There had been a long haul before Secretariat. People were saying there couldn't be Triple Crown winners anymore. The story of how Woody Brune created his own Secretariat genealogy reads like a detective novel. It begins innocently enough in October of 1970. Woody is in Kentucky to report on Bull Hancock, the master of Claiborne Farm, a home of champions. This is horse country, a calendar cover landscape which seems light years away from the clangor of commerce, but which obviously doesn't support its extensive, expensive elegance by the sale of hay and pony rides. These gravid mares grazing on grass which looks as if it had been spray painted for the camera carry within them hopes of racing glory. The carefully planned babies which will be untangling their matchstick legs this spring, gambling along the horizon line next spring, and thundering for the wire a year later. Out in the countryside, the driveways wind to what appears to be a still standing set from Gone with the Wind. Mundanely, it is the main building of Claiborne Farms, where A.B. Hancock presides over 700 horses who've been to the races or are going there. Among them, scattered over 6,000 acres, stallions like Buck Passer, Bold Lad, and Bold Ruler, sires whose names are engraved on historic trophies, as well as in the bloodlines of those who will eventually break their records without dimming their names. The Hancock thinks the horse industry fell into Kentucky's green lap by default. I don't think it's any better land than the Middle Basin of Tennessee or some places around Maryland, Virginia, but it has been uh, uh, horse country for so long, we've got a lot of help around here now that understand the game. The game Claiborne Farm understands is breeding. In the spring of 1969, Claiborne's bold ruler, the dominant stallion of that era, Sire's Secretariat. Fast forward two years, and another twist worthy of Sherlock Holmes Woody pays a visit to Meadow Farm in Virginia. Secretariat was born and raised there and is still an untried, unknown youngster. Woody is drawn there by stablemate Reba Ridge, who has just won the Kentucky Derby for owner Penny Chenery Tweedy. The unpredictable fortunes of the Civil War took the Chenery family away from this old Virginia estate almost a century ago. Now Reba Ridge lives here. And this is the place from which the family deals with the almost unpredictable fortunes of racing. When the picture-pretty children move like spring toys across the meadows, the sober-minded remember that of 26,000-odd foals of 69, only 258 seemed promising enough for a Kentucky Derby nomination. Sixteen of those got to Churchill Downs, and only one went to Baltimore this week with a chance at the Triple Crown. Howard Gentry, who runs the day-to-day -day operations of the farm, remembers Reva Ridge as a sickly foal. He was a little thin for a foal, but uh, we got right on him. He responded to treatment right off. Some of these young horses will have unavoidable mishaps and never hear the bugle. Some will think the bugle no more than an invitation to a slow gallop, and some will do everything right and meet a better horse. In the meantime, it's too good a day to waste in grazing. 
On Meadows' training track, the farm's senior class is taking intermediate tantering. A member of that senior class is Secretariat. Her farm manager said to me, Hey, Wood, I'm worried about Ms. Tweedy. I mean, this year she had Reeve and all that publicity. Next year she's not going to have nothing. And, of course, next year she had Secretariat. In fact, Secretariat in a late rush wins Horse of the Year honors that year, 1972, the year before his Triple Crown triumph, beating out his stablemate, Penny Tweedy's other star, Reva Ridge. If Reva Ridge had won the whole Triple Crown, he never would have been as successful as Secretary because his ears flopped back and forth. He had a slight resemblance to a mule. He was a great horse, but not quite what you want in a hero. I mean, there are actors who are better actors than some, but the handsome actor is the one we remember. And handsome he was. When we come back, 1973 becomes the year of the horse on Woody's World. Secretariat. My father took me to the races when I was 13 years old, and I, the first one I picked one, which gave a small boy a sense of power he doesn't usually have. I was around horses, I got to like horses. There's a kind of purity, and I leave aside all the stuff about betting. They compete beautifully. By the 1973 racing season, Secretariat has become the talk of the town. For a nation dealing with Watergate, Starting Gate has more appeal. But the big red horse hits a bump on his way to the Kentucky Derby. Woody describes what happened. In those enclaves of the wealthy, the auction galleries of art and the sales rings of racing, the millions are flying fast these days. And a prime example of the pace is a young horse who, before the Triple Crown, was oversubscribed as a $6 million stud prospect. As a financial anatomist, one may speculate on the worth of Secretariat, sold in 32 shares of $190,000 each. How much one wonders for the flying feet which carried him to Horse of the Year honors in his two-year-old campaign. How much for the handsome head, which shows a resemblance to his father, the mighty bold ruler? How much for the smooth barrel of power from which flows his strength? One is left with that philosophical truth called gestalt, which says the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. I horse. told you he was a good horse. Well, he is a pretty good horse. Well, uh, he's I'm a nice... I'd give, give 25,000 well, 23-year-old Seth Hancock, who handled the syndication of Secretariat's breeding career for Mrs. Penny Tweedy, owner of last year's derby winner, Reva Ridge, is a man always moving on the edges of racetracks, checking the health, happiness, and in a gentlemanly way, the solvency of prospects for the big deals, which govern that world where trophy rooms are as common and as full as closets are with the rest of us. He was trained in this art by his father, the late Bull Hancock, master of Claiborne Farm, who died suddenly this past year. Accepting the mantle of leadership, young Hancock has taken over a place that appears to be a travel poster come to life, housing such notable names as Round Table. That majestic might have been the lamed hoist a flag and Nijinsky, most expensively syndicated animal until Secretariat. Behind the fields are markers for those who came before. Bold Ruler, Gallant Fox, Nazrula. There are never less than 40 to 50 million dollars worth of stallions munching green luncheons here. Next year, Secretariat will probably be among them. How did you arrive at the figure? Well, the horse that's standing behind us here, Nijinsky, was a uh horse that we, that in my mind, I used to establish his value because I felt that Secretariat was equal to or greater stud prospect as Najinsky, and Najinsky was done for 170000 a share, and uh, we arrived at the value of a share by viewing the value of a share in Najinsky. Now, you are 23 years old. Did you have any butterflies in your stomach as you went about arranging rapidly a $6 million deal? Well, when I first started, uh, the first few people I called said, oh, I'd like to think about it and call you back. And I was a little worried then. And then a few people said no. 
But late on the first afternoon, the people that said they wanted to call back did call back and said that they would take a share, and I knew by after that afternoon that everything was all right. Exasperatingly and excitingly, chance slaps the face of power in racing, and watching Secretariat's lackluster performance in the recent Wood Memorial, his wide running of the turn, Hancock hid his horror behind his binoculars, those circles which so often show us with unwelcome sharpness the futilities of calculation. Still, there's always a next day, and soon Hancock and his wife were back in Lexington, talking to those who come to this racing center with open hearts and checkbooks. The 32 shareholders and the whole racing world can now fairly wonder whether Secretariat, after his run in the 99th Derby today, isn't one whose name won't be just engraved on trophies and stones, but also on racing history. Here's Chick Anderson's call of the stretch. Secretariat is fourth and moving up on the outside and is now third and moving at the leaders as they come for the head of the stretch. They're at the head of the stretch and Cham is the leader. He leads it by a length. Secretariat is in the center of the racetrack and driving. Jackie Green now drops back. Coming on a bit is Forgo, our native on the outside. Now and then the stretch, it's sec Secretariat. Secretariat on the outside to take the lead. Sham holding in second. It's Secretariat moving away. He has it by two and a half. Sham, then on the outside, our native. At the wire, it's going to be Secretariat. He wins it by two lengths. Sham is second. Our native third by an F. So the questions about Secretariat, questions which had been so bitter because the expectations had been so high are answered, are indeed flung back in the faces of those who asked them by today's track record victory in 159 and two-fifths. The big chestnut came from far back to run over our doubts and make his demand for fame. This is Haywood Hale Brune at Churchill Downs. The Preakness in Baltimore proves Woody right. Secretariat is dominant again in the second leg of the Triple Crown under jockey Ron Turcott. Secretariat, this year's candidate, is the latest to vie for a trophy born out of a rash of Triple Crown winners ending with citation in 1948. Secretariat's owner is Mrs. Penny Tweedy, who had two parts of the puzzle last year with Reba Ridge missing out here on a muddy day. It was one of the few dark afternoons for Mrs. Tweedy's Meadow Stable, which with a small number of horses has enjoyed remarkable recent success. All during this week, newsmen have acted as if the outcome of the Preakness were not much in doubt, as they surrounded Secretariat's trainer, Lucian Lauren, with the dedication of those in the train of a guru. When they called the horses to the track this afternoon, Secretariat had the proud bearing of a champion and the proud backing of the crowd, which drove him well below the even money mark, as had been Reva Ridge last year. Here's Chick Anderson's call of the final charge. But Ronnie Turcott has his whip put away, and Secretariat has him put away. He's beginning to draw away. It is Secretariat. He's coming to the wire. He wins it by two and a half, almost three. Jam an easy second, our native third. So Secretariat stands on the edge of a triple crown, on tiptoe. Although this afternoon there were times when he didn't seem so much on tiptoe as flying slightly above the earth, like one of those horses ancient Greek gods used to ride when in a hurry to get back to Olympus. This is Haywood Hale Brune in Baltimore. Let me just ask you, Mrs. Tweedy, for a finish. You are confident, I'm sure. No, I'm scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> We'll return with more of Woody's World, Secretariat. Something in him that just made the motion of his body exhilarating to him. After he won the Derby going faster all the time, when he was led off the track at the end of the race, the only sweat on his body was a thin line where the girth had touched him. His neck was arched. His feet were dancing. He was clearly ready to run another mile and a quarter. After his Kentucky Derby and Preakness victories, both would have set records, but for an apparently malfunctioning timing device in Baltimore, Secretariat becomes a matinee idol. His owner, Penny Chenery Tweedy, becomes everybody's favorite television aunt. I still can't put in words how I felt because I was so scared we weren't going to do it that I think I still haven't gotten used to the fact that we did. <laughs> it 
We were on the cover of three national magazines. And this is the kiss of death for Secretariat to be on the cover of Time. We thought, oh, he'll never, never overcome this. They're moving on the turn now. For the turn of Secretariat. The Triple Crown is an odd phrase with its suggestion of a three-headed monarch. And the last jewel of this crown is today's race, the Belmont Stakes at the championship distance of a mile and a half. The concept of the Triple Crown, victory in the Derby, Preakness, and Belmont, began with its first winner, Sir Barton. Citation getting ready and final instructions to jockey Eddie R. Carroll, who's after a new... Citation rang the three-tongued bell in 1948. And that citation and the Kentucky bred ace of the Calumet Farm bids fair to take America's Triple Crown. And then suddenly began the long silence. This week, the drums began to beat for a new putative wonder horse, the most likely prospect in two decades to follow citation. Today, as the heavily favored secretariat led the field to the post, some were saying that the big chestnut, whose $6 million breeding syndicate price was set before the derby, is in a class with the winged wonders of the sport, a horse to be mentioned in those endless arguments about the all-time all. Here's Chick Anderson's call of the decisive moments. And they're off. For the turn at Secretariat. It looks like he's opening. The lead is increasing. Make it three. He was running through the fire in his blood that made him think that even though he had no wings, if he went fast enough, he could fly up and join the horses in the sky. They're on the turn. It's Secretariat is blazing along. The first three quarters of a mile in 109 and four fifths. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. Sam is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today. As my I was in awe. It was the day he felt best in his life, and he was in the most important race of his life, which is the way extraordinary events happen. Secretariat is in a position that he's impossible to catch. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths, and now Price of Prince has taken second, and Mike Gallant has moved back to third. They're in the stretch. Secretariat has opened a 22 length lead. He is going to be the Triple Crown winner. Here comes Secretariat to the wire. An unbelievable, an amazing performance. He hits the finish 25 lengths in front. An amazing, unbelievable performance by this miracle horse. And look at Mr. Sweeney. If you were now to syndicate Secretariat after the Belmont, what would you charge? Well, I think he would be worth roughly $300,000 a share, which would put his value at $9.6 million. And he was $190,000 when you did it? That's right. And there was some slight reluctance then? Well, there have been quite a few horses that haven't been good three-year-olds when they were good two-year-olds, and a few people were looking at this fact and thinking that $190,000 was a lot of money. Well, at 300000 you come to $9.6 million. Couldn't you add just a little bit and make him the $10 million horse? I guess you could, but I don't know if any horse is worth $10 million. If, the, if there is one that's worth it, this one is. So, Secretariat, unlike so many promisers, fulfilled the promise beyond the dreams of anyone. A smasher of a record. A winner by a longer stretch of racetrack than anybody has ever done it before 70,000 or almost 70,000 people, the first Triple Crown winner since 1948, a great performance on a day when most of us found it too hot to agitate a fan. It would have been a marvelous race for an eagle. This is Haywood Hale Brune in New York. You can look back and say, oh, of course, we needed a hero. There was Nixon, there was Watergate, and there was just anxious times. And to have something pure, and tremendously strong to love and care about was, it just struck a nerve in everybody. Many people bought mutual tickets on Secretary in the Belmont, which they never cashed. That was to be their souvenir. Because when you are in the presence of something marvelous, some little bit of it, like a piece of glitter drops on you and you've got it, and you've got that ticket, Part of Secretariat's glory is with you. You didn't care about the ticket. Just, he was mine that day. Coming up, the final chapter of Woody's World, Secretariat. Well, when I saw the statue first, I thought it was beautiful. The only thing is 
my feeling about him was his bigness. He was such a big horse and so strong. This is graceful, and it's a nice piece of work, but it looks like just a horse, and he looked like no other horse I can ever think of. He wiped away the memories of Citation and Man of War. He meant to the people who saw him the chance to say later, yes, when I was a kid, I saw a Secretariat. Secretariat races six more times that glorious summer and autumn of 1973. He, in fact, loses a couple of those races, but it doesn't matter. He is still the people's champion. Racing luck. I think tends to run not jaggedly but in long waves so that Mrs. Tweedy had Riva Ridge and Secretariat in two years and then nothing after that as her father Christopher Chenery had never had a derby win. We have two and then it's all gone. It's like racing which is always either giving you a pat on the back or a kick in the behind. In November of 1973, the Kentucky-bred Virginia-born horse is given a rare send-off of the usually hard-bitten New York racing fans. People come from all over, almost 33,000 of them, to Aqueduct Racetrack, where he burnished his reputation. They come not to see him race, just for one last glimpse of greatness, one last parade up the track. So long, Big Red. You were the best. You gave us memories. And Secretariat has him put away. He's been getting the raw away. It is Secretariat. He's coming to the wire. He wins it by two and a half. So what happened to Secretariat? Remember Pastoral Claiborne Farm and Bull Hancock? That's where Secretariat would spend the rest of his life in a serene Kentucky meadow watched over carefully by Seth Hancock, Bull Hancock's son. Secretariat was one horse that touched people's lives. He knew when a camera came out, and he always took a pose. You'd get that cheapest little camera. Take my picture. It is said by experts that he was the perfect horse in measurement. And now I hold up to your camera. I hope you can see it. What goes everywhere with me. That's when he had just stopped racing and gone to be a father and had not reached the age of where did we go wrong with the children. He's just a happy bachelor in another, and he's, he's my pocket piece, my good luck horse.